to magnify His name and worship To magnify his name and worship him. We have come, we have come into the house to magnify. Concentrate on him, forget so forget about yourself. Come on, concentrate and concentrate on him and worship him. Come on, take your mind off yourself. So forget. Yes, and concentrate on Him and worship Him. So forget about yourself. Concentrate on Him. Concentrate. Gonna do that again. So forget about, so forget about yourself. What you gonna do? And concentrate on him and worship him. So. Hallelujah. And concentrate on Him and worship and worship Him. Oh, forget about yourself, church. Come on. So forget about yourself and concentrate on Him. Come on, let's worship him. Oh, come on, come on, forget about yourself. Come on, concentrate, concentrate. Put your mind on Jesus. Oh, come on, put your mind on Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Come on and put your mind on Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Put your mind on him. Put your mind on Jesus. We gonna have a time. Put your mind on Jesus. We gonna have a time. Put your mind on Jesus. We gonna have a time. Put your mind on Jesus. We gonna have a time. Put your mind on Jesus. We gonna have a time. Put your mind on Jesus. We gonna have a time. Put your mind on Jesus. We gonna have a time. Put your mind on Jesus. We gonna have a time. Put your mind, put your mind on him. We gonna have a time. Put your mind, put your mind on him. We gonna have a time. Put your mind, put your mind on him. We gonna have a time. Put your mind, put your mind on him. We gonna have a time. Put your mind on Jesus. We gonna have a time. Put your mind on Jesus. We gonna have a time. Put your mind. Jesus, we gonna have a time. Put your mind on Jesus. We gonna have a time. Put your mind on Jesus. We gonna have a time. Put your mind on Jesus. We gonna have a time. Put your mind, put your mind on Him. We gonna have a time. Put your mind on Jesus. We gonna have a time. Well, I'm talking about a good time. We gonna have When we all see Jesus, we gonna have a time. Oh, good time, good time. We gonna have a time. Good time, good time. We gonna have a time. Good time, good time. Hey. Good time, good time. We gonna have a time. Oh, I'm talking about a good time. We gonna have. Jesus. 
Jesus. We're going to have a time. Put your mind on Jesus. We're going to have a time. Mind on Jesus. We're going to have a time. Put your mind, put your mind on him. We're going to have a time. Put your mind, put your mind on him. We're going to Come on, clap those hands. Come on. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Tell me who can stand me for us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. We have the victory. Listen, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. What you do? I told Satan, get me behind. Victory today is mine. When I rose, when I rose this morning, I didn't have no doubt the Lord would bring me out. So I got down on my knees. I said, Lord, that is why I got the victory. Oh, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. What you do? I told Satan. Get me behind. I told, I told Satan. Get me behind. I told, I told Satan. Get me behind. Not today, devil. I told Satan. Get me behind. I told him. I told Satan. Get me behind. I told him. I told Satan. Get me behind. Hey, I got the victory, hallelujah. 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 I got it, I got the victory, hallelujah. I got the victory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. I got the victory. Hallelujah. Listen. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. He is Lord. He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. He is Lord. He is Lord. Satan. Satan defeated. Hallelujah. Oh, you better say it. Satan defeated. Hallelujah. He's defeated. Satan defeated. Hallelujah. Satan defeated. Hallelujah. In my life, Satan. Satan defeated. Hallelujah. Satan defeated. Hallelujah. Over my body. Satan defeated. Hallelujah. Satan defeated. Hallelujah. In my finance. Satan defeated. He's defeated. Let me hear you say, say the feet Hallelujah. What you say, say the feet Hallelujah. One more time, he is. Say the 
Like you got the victory. Come on. I got the victory, victory. 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 I got the victory. That's what I hear. I got the victory. I got it. Victory. I got the victory. I got it. Victory. I got the victory. I got it. Victory. Victory. I got the victory. I got the victory. I got the victory. I got the victory. I got it. Victory. Victory, I got it. Victory, I got the victory. I got it. Victory, I got the victory. Hey, I got the victory. I got it. Victory, 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 I got the victory. You better declare it victory. 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 I'm not defeated. Victory. Victory. I got the victory. Victory. I got the victory. Victory. I got the victory. Victory. Victory, 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 victory. I'm coming out. Victory, 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 victory. I'm coming out. Victory, 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 victory. Coming out with power. Victory. If I had the strength, listen, listen, 
if I had the strength, if the Lord could just give me back 10 years, I said I was going to come through that door shouting. I said that's how I wanted to come to church today. He said enter into his gates with thanksgiving and come in his courts with praise. I said Lord I want to come in praise because that devil is a liar. I got the victory. I might have to pay for it later. But I'm going to praise him while I'm here. Oh, Jesus. I don't know about you, but I got something to praise him for. Praise him, Nana. Praise him. Praise him. Yourself. Some of y'all need to get around her and start praising God. They said when the praises go up, his blessings come down. When the praises go up, healing comes down. Praise him. I got the victory Hey, glory to God Now somebody give him a shout of praise Hallelujah Oh, he got us here I got the victory. I got the victory. I got the victory. I got the victory. Oh, I got the victory. I got the victory. The devil thought he had me. But honey, I got away. I got the victory. Hey, glory to God. I got the victory. I got the victory. I got the victory. Oh, come on, let's give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't know my story. All the things I've been through. One thing I'm going to tell you. My praise, my worship is for real, baby. <laughs> God be good to me. You can't make me doubt him. Because I know too much about him. Oh, glory to God. And give him praise. Come on and bless his name. Come on and magnify him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Thank Come on and bless him. Thank you, Come on and bless him. Bless the Lord on my soul and all that's within me. 
Come on and bless him. Come on, let the people of God bless him. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done, my soul cries out, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. Come on, bless him. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. Come on, he's good. Shh. Come on, just start telling him thank you. Praise him, Nana. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, think on him. Think on how good he's been. Hallelujah. Come on now, let's reflect on his goodness. His goodness. His mercy. His loving kindness. Where would we be without him? When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my very soul cries out, Hallelujah! I thank God for saving me. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done just for me. My very soul cries out, Hallelujah! I thank God for saving, saving me. Hey, I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. For saving me. Anybody glad this so saved today? My very soul cries out. My very soul cries out. Hallelujah. I thank God. I thank God for saving, saving, saving me. Hallelujah. Oh, when I think of the goodness, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. I thank God. I thank God, I gotta give him the glory. I gotta give him the honor. I gotta give him the praise. I thank God. I thank God. I thank God for saying, Whoa, he said. Save me. Oh, come on, praise him.
declaring, I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. He said, He reached way down and He saved me. Oh, He reached way down. You know he reached way down. He reached way down and he saved me. Oh, come on, let the glad folk. Glad I'm saved, folk. I thank God. Oh, I just hear that. Somebody say, I thank God. I could have been lost in my sin. I thank God. I was a wretch undone. I thank God. For saying, oh, he saved, he saved, he saved me. He saved me. He saved me. The Lord saved me. The Lord saved me. He came seeking for me. He came seeking for me. The Lord saved me. And I'm glad about it. I'm glad about it. I'm glad about it. Yes. That's it. Worship the Lord. That's it. That's it. With uplifted hands. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Glory, 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 glory. How many give him glory this morning? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your glory. Thank you. We give you all the praise. Give you all the glory. It's worthy to be praised. Amen. Beautiful for situation. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. God is to be glorified at all times. Lift up your hands, O oh, ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Somebody ought to praise him and give him glory. Now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Come on, somebody give him praise. The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament shows his handiwork. Somebody give him praise and glory. Oh, he's good. And worthy to be praised. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. And I hear a scripture that says, this 
is the victory that overcome the world even our faith if you got faith in God today somebody ought to declare victory tell your neighbor around you this is the victory right here my praise is a victory right here this is the victory hallelujah hallelujah oh hallelujah it overcome the world yes 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 let's bless the lord amen we give god praise and glory yes 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 do me a favor reach over and love on your neighbor tell him god bless you and good to see you and thank god for you that's it find somebody to love on and fellowship with them i don't take this for granted because during the pandemic we couldn't even touch each other amen is that right we had to stay away from each other find somebody and love on them and just tell them god bless you and good to see you and you look nice say something kind to them today amen we just praise god i see this side fellowship and see some of y'all ain't even come on now come on now come on now come on now it's important ah it's important we got to stick together stay together that's it that's it we thank god we come together for god and primarily and we're here for one another as brothers and sisters in christ we're here to strengthen and encourage and uplift one another we thank god for a place to come where god dwells thank god for the house of god how many grateful for the church and the house of the lord amen it's so so important to have a place of worship the bible says in the book of acts that he not only filled those individuals with the spirit where they were sitting but the scripture says the lord filled the house where they were sitting amen so the place is sanctified for worship it's a place where we come to give god glory and praise and in the house of God, we always honor the men and women of God. Let's thank God for Bishop and First Lady. God bless you. We love you. We praise God for them, for their labor, their strength that God is doing in their life. Praise God for Dr. English today, Elder Boleg, Elder Day, Minister Terry, all the ministers here. We thank God for everybody, our great musicians. Thank God for you this morning. We give God praise. Clap your hands for the streaming audience, streaming all over the world watching us we give god praise for each and every one of you connecting with us we pray today that god will speak to your heart we pray that your tent doors your hearts are open to receive what the lord has for you today we pray as our sister dina is coming with the announcements we keep everything in mind and we believe in god for your blessing today god bless you let us receive her at this time praise the lord everybody praise the lord everybody Amen. I was just thinking if God never did another thing for me, I would still serve him. Amen. Because I don't know how you feel right now, but the presence of God is heavy and he's healing and he's delivering and he's setting free. Amen. 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 So many are walking away from him. Amen. But he's just so good. Amen. Amen. As a way of announcement, somebody say today. today. Today we will be having our annual church business meeting immediately following service. Amen. There will be light refreshments served and it will start exactly at two o'clock. So please don't go anywhere too far. Amen. That is today at two o'clock our ch annual church business meeting for our IHI members. On Tuesday, February 27, 2024, which is this Tuesday, the women will be hosting a prayer call at 7 p.m. Yeah. Amen, women. Yeah. Amen. All are invited, men, amen, and children and guests. You do not have to be an IHI member to attend, amen. 
the number, amen, we will provide to you, but it's 978-990-5000, and there is a code, amen, that you need to put in in order to join. I believe it will be for an hour, amen. Amen. And that will be this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Amen. So come on in. Let's blow up the phone line. Amen. Amen. On Friday, March the 1st at 7 p.m. And Saturday, March 2nd at 10 a.m., we will be starting off 2024 with our prayer room with Elder Josephine Boleg. Y'all don't sound excited to me. Amen. Got a week of prayer. Amen. Tuesday, then Friday, then Saturday. Amen. Amen. So come with your expectation. Every week, every service, let's, let's raise our level of expectation. Amen. Let's believe God that he's going to do something. I mean, I, I believe um, Brother Terry, Minister Terry said on Monday to bring your doctor's notes Bring your anything that's going on with you. Put it in your pocket. Amen. Come on out to the prayer and believe God with it. Amen. Lay it at the altar and believe that God is able to do the impossible because he is. Amen. On Sunday, March the 3rd, 2024, we will be having our pastoral service. Amen. No, our offering. Our first Sunday is set aside for our pastoral offering. Amen. We have special envelopes. Amen. That the ushers can hand out either now or later. Amen. We are asking you to put a love offering within that, in that envelope, and that will go directly to our leaders. Amen. Amen. On Sunday, March the 10th, we will be having our pastoral encouragement service with Pastor Albert Morgan. Amen. He is a former pastor of Union Baptist Temple in Bristol, New Jersey, and we're looking so forward to fellowshipping with him again. Amen. Amen. Please keep our sister Rosa in your prayer. She lost her sister. I believe her sister was in, um, lived in Puerto Rico. Amen. So keep her in prayer. Um, if we have any notification of services so that we could just pray for her during that time that she be strengthened and her family. Amen. We will definitely get that information out to you. Amen. Anyone that knows a member of IHI that is sick or in the hospital, please notify Ella Boleg up at the front. Amen. Amen. And she will add you to the prayer list. Amen. And anyone that has a cell phone, amen, please do not talk on it. Don't text. Amen. If you have candy or gum, please, you know, sometimes we need a mint. I understand. But sometimes we just have to look around and make sure that we're keeping our sanctuary clean, that we're taking care of the things that God gives to us, that we don't have gum in our seats, on our floors. Amen. Amen. We want to make sure Sister Nikki doesn't have to work too hard. Amen. 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 She's going to get me later. Amen. So also the summit ministry and marketplace conference will be march the 14th through the 16th 2024 this is with apostle curlin amen amen praise god for that and it will be at the hilton garden Inn in louisville kentucky amen there are many speakers that will be speaking amen if you want more information about that please let the office know or come see me i have the flyer amen and please Continue to Lord, um, enjoy the Lord today and lift up his name and let God have his way. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just wanted to come back before you just with a reminder that, uh, of course, next uh, Sunday is our pastoral Sunday, our first Sunday where we give a monetary love gift to our bishop. And I just wanted to tell you thank you and commend you for those who have been consistent with that. I just praise God for you and for your love and your service. Amen. It was within my heart and mind to uh, make sure that that will increase in their life uh, this year and from henceforth and forevermore, as long as I'm standing before you. Amen. So I wanted to commend you with that. And also just to give you a continued reminder about our second Sunday services and what that's for. That's for our pastoral encouragement services. Come on, let's thank God for that. Amen. Because sometimes we get excited in the beginning and then we drop off as things go along. But I don't want you to drop off this year. Amen. Amen. We still have our 35th anniversary goal in mind. So listen, come on out as you have heard the announcements. And we're believing God to do great things among you because it can't happen. Somebody say, without me. Without me. All right. Come on. Let's give God the praise. Our bishop is coming.
to break the bread of life. Come on, let's give Pastor Parker a hand. Hallelujah. Let's thank God for all the ministers. Amen. Thank God for the Lord waking you up another day and giving you a time to worship him in spirit and in truth. All right. Amen. Come on, give God a praise for yourself. For the spirit of the Lord is here. Praise God. And while you're yet standing, amen, we're just going to pray and go in because I want you, uh, your attendance, we got people with um, far and near, and I want your attendance today because where there's unity, there's strength. And we need unity in this last hour, amen. So I'm hoping that the Lord will give us grace today. But by the same token, we don't want to rush God. I told Pastor Parker, whatever he said, that's what we're going to do. Or was it Terry? I don't know which one. I said, well, hey, amen. We want God to be God. Is that right? So necessary in this last and evil day. Amen. Because in him, there is no failure. There's no failure in God. And I don't know about you, but I don't know what I would do without him. Hallelujah. What would I do without the Lord who woke me up and given me a right mind? God is so good. So let us pray, amen, and ask God to speak to our hearts and ask God to have his way because the anointing is here. He broke up the follow ground. And so now we want God to talk to us. Father God, we thank you today. We glorify your holy name. We honor you in your greatness and your majesty. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you, God, for showering us with your blessings in your presence we give you praise we give you praise because you pull us closer you said no man can come to you except you draw us we thank you for drawing us to you today we could have stayed home and watched sports and we could have went on to the mall god but you drew us even closer to you today and lord we come today not for form or fashion but we're here to receive your strength we're here to receive your healing we're here to receive your instruction we're here, oh God, to magnify you and glorify you for just who you are. And we're so grateful and we're so thankful because it's a privilege, hallelujah, to be able to be pulled into your kingdom. And we thank you for what you're about to do. In the name of Jesus, look on our sister Rosa, comfort, Lord God. Oh God, look on our sister, uh, those that are grieving, God. Comfort, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, strengthen our sister Anderson today, Lord. We thank you today in Jesus' precious holy name. Now give God one more round of praise. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, praise him. And praise him, praise him. Hallelujah. God is good, and is, he's worthy of all praise. And isn't, isn't he? Isn't he marvelous? Do you really believe that? Isn't God marvelous? Come on now. Really, let's think about it. Let's think about it. Hallelujah. It was one day you didn't know that. One day you had no idea how great God is. But isn't he wonderful? Let's never take God for granted. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We're going to go into one verse of scripture. It's the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18, verse 21. We're going to go to the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18, verse 21. That entire chapter is a story about Elijah, King Ahab, and what God was trying to do, and spiritual warfare. So when you get your time, make sure you read that and you're hearing. We didn't have enough time today. But read the scriptures, amen? For in that you have eternal life. Praise the living God. If there's somebody near you that doesn't have a Bible, I think it might be on the screen or we can never share the word of God. There's only one verse, so we're all going to read it together. When you have it, if I can get a couple of amens, we can go forward. Amen. We need a little bit more. Let's see my good ear. All right, all right. All together. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, how long? Follow him. All right. All right. Now, we didn't say that with authority. So I'm going to give you another chance to say that like you really believe it. All right. Amen. Say it with authority. You ready? One more time. 
all together. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. If Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. Amen. I'm believing God to let me use me today to give you the thought in your spirit. Be true to God. Be true to God. Amen. As we begin to meditate on our way of worshiping God and God is dealing with me, the Holy Spirit just brought to my attention the mind sights that we have in worship. The average American believer, I'm going to say that for us in America, when we come to worship God or come to a church, um, some come for religion, some come to appease the spirituality, but the majority individual comes with a, I thank God it's Friday mentality. We go through all week and deal with the bad news on the news and family and work and working jobs and the stress of life. But then when it comes to the weekend, uh, th we used to say, thank God it's Friday. And so what do we do back in the day? Is it still the same for today? You want to forget all the stress of the week. You want to take some time for yourself. Uh, back in the day, we, we want to go into some entertainment. We want to do something, have some fun, go bowling, go to the movies. Uh, um, if I'm deep in sin, I want to go party. I'm going to get ready. I'm going to party. I'm going to party hard. I might even get a date that night. But, amen, this is what I'm going to do on the weekend. Amen. Uh, I used to get high. I said, I'm going to get high on the weekend because I, ain't get, I can't handle the work, the work week. Um, basically, we come to the end of the week with a mind of escapism from daily life. And so as the Lord began to minister to me that the average believer, when they come to church, they really are not there for God, but they're there to appease their spirituality, but they come with a mindset of, you know, thank God it's Friday. Don't stress me. Don't, don't wear me out. Don't, don't, don't mess with my sins. Don't mess with my issues. I, I, just, wanna, I just want God uh, to, to appease uh, my appetite. Am I making sense here? Uh, so, so like we do in the natural, in the spiritual sense, uh, we come to, to, for the pleasure. We come uh, for the excitement rather than God. And we tend to forget that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And in the world, I didn't realize that God is able to meet that need, to fill that void, to give me that comfort, and give me the strength that I need to go through another week, uh, to give me peace of mind, and relax, and a selah. And the scripture lets us know, for the Lord is our help and our shield. But I thought this, the marijuana did it, the drinking did it, the partying did it, but it didn't do it. Do I have a witness here today? Amen. So we forget, we tend to, because of the strategy of the enemy, we come to church, amen, and forget God's standards. We forget that the church is called the house of God. Amen. It's not just in there. I know we're living in a culture now where it's an enterprise and that people have taken away, taken away the reverence of God and uh, the things that were used to be established. Amen. But God created an environment where we can come and worship who he is. God created an environment where we can honor him, where we can reverence the God of our creation. And when we come in the presence of God, we should come with a reverence, with an awe. We should come, amen, so we can hear what he has to say because our God speaks. He not only speaks in the spirit, but he can also speak. He speaks through his word. Amen. He can speak to us, amen, in our hearts. He can speak to us in our consciences, but he will also use uh, bodily. He also use the gifts of the spirit to speak, amen, what he has to say to the church. The scripture tells us, hey, let us hear what the spirit has to say to the church. And so when I come, I want to hear what God has to say. I want, to, I want God to strengthen me. I want God to heal. I want God 
to comfort, amen, and I'm coming to receive his strength, amen, because he's able to empower the road, those who are weary. He's able to lift up the hung down head. Amen. He's able to bring strength and weakness. And not only that, but also God can give me wisdom. Wisdom to encounter the things that I've dealt with all week. God can give me instruction and help me even get closer to him from what is my strength. Amen. But the Bible teaches us that we have to be conscious of God's instruction. And having that same mindset of who God is in his house, amen, he said through his word, he says, listen here, the time is going to come. Well, men will not endure sound doctrine. They said the time is going to come, amen, when men are going to ignore, amen, what God has to say. And so we understand in these liberal times, uh, amen, in our culture, we have redefined God. Amen. We have put God in our paradigm. Amen. We have forsaken the word of God. We have forsaken who God is in his scriptures, in his word. We have brought God into meeting our own inclinations and our own desires. Do you hear what I'm saying? Somebody say, be true to God. Amen. We forget who God is and that God uh, initially established a system. He established a culture, a kingdom where he could be worshipped. But we have brought them down to our level. We don't want to be judged by God. We want God to be a God of tolerance. We want God to be able to understand who I am in my carnal nature. We want, even though we know that Christ came and was tempted in all points, yet as we are, yet without sin. Uh, but, but we want God, amen, not to, to, to burden me. We don't want God to get in my way. And because we have that mentality, what has happened to the church in our culture, we have come to the degree where we party in the church now. We want to bring our ways of comfort to thank God as Friday mindset in the church. Uh, we want to use secular music. We want to hear nothing spiritual because it's not about the spirit. It's about ministering to my carnal nature, about minister to my fallen nature. Amen. But I want to tell you today, amen, before I go forward, that if we replace the gift, amen, of the giver, the created replaces the creator, we have done something very dangerous. What is that? We have fallen to idolatry. King Solomon says, listen here. In the book of Ecclesiastes, he began talking about life and the vanity of life. That when an individual removes from the relationship of God, that life becomes futile, life becomes full of vanity and vex vexation of spirit. Anybody from the world, and I pray that you're listening to us online or if you're here, you can be honest and say, yeah, I do certain things, but I keep chasing that because it's filling the void temporarily. It's like a one night stands. I'm gratified for a moment, but I can't keep it. Because it's not a relationship. Lord have mercy. I can be gratified for what I do, but it's not a relationship. It doesn't have any worth. It doesn't have any stability. Amen. But God and his awesome wisdom. Somebody say in the beginning, God. Beginning God is all about God. Do I have a witness here? God has shown us, amen, he designed an environment where he should be worshipped. In the beginning, God, he dealt with Adam. He taught Adam, amen, how to worship. Amen. It goes off into Abraham, Isaac, David. Come on. God was showing us, listen, this is how you ought to glorify me because I'm going to take care of you. This is how you honor me because I got you covered. Amen. This is how I want to have a relationship with you. Amen. This is how I want you to live in this kingdom. This is how I'm going to deal with your sins. This is how I'm going to keep you in connection with me. And God is saying from the beginning of the time, we have to be true to him. Are you hearing me today? God has set up a standard, but we have fallen from that standard. And because the world is doing it, because the world is doing it, doesn't make it right. But God has never changed. He's immutable. He says, I'm a God that changed not. So let us go into our text. Before I go, I need you to help me preach today and say, I got to be true to God. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 18, we get a story that many of you who've been in church and Sunday school know the story of Ahab, amen, dealing with Elijah on Mount Carmel.
We understand that, amen, God had given Elijah the prophetic word, amen, that there's going to be a famine in the land because of God judging them because of their sins. And we find out for three years they had went into a place of famine, amen, and God had dealt with them because Israel had left the reverence of God, left keeping God in the right place in their life. And what happened was they began to gravitate to the gods of the Canaanites. They gravitated to Baal. They gravitated, amen, to the gods of, I'm going to call them, the enemy. And so we find out that God has a showdown using Elijah. Amen. A spiritual showdown where God's going to show them that he is the true living God. The Bible declares that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Watch this. And they that dwell therein. And so Elijah is being used by God to get Ahab and all the false prophets, amen, 450 prophets of Baal, 400 prophets, amen, of Asterisk, amen, those that worship under Jezebel. We all going to come together and have the showdown of the showdown. And so we see, amen, as you read the story on your own account, amen, one of the things that we want to talk about today is that the statement that Elijah makes in verse 21, he says, how long are you going to waver between two opinions? Uh, he's talking to God's people here, amen, but he brought the world system in presence uh, of the worship. He's talking to the nation of Israel, but he brought Baalism and Ashtaroth worshipers, uh, idolaters, into the challenge. He tells everybody, he's really talking to God's people and to the unbeliever. Amen, because a lot of people believe in God, but they won't worship God. He says, how long are you going to waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, your God, follow it. Always said that. I'm not going to go to church and get high in the bathroom. I ain't going to go to church and get a hookup so I can have some sex Sunday night. I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to come in here and hustle God's people like I did in the world. I ain't going to do that. Because this is God's house. Y'all ain't saying that. I ain't going to sit up here and act like I'm an angel and live like a devil. I ain't going to do that. I'm not going to play with the creator of heaven and earth. I have too much reverence for the God of my creation to do me and then play with his name. I'm not going to do that. Amen. But we, so we see that same condition in the house of God. That he says, how long will you halt between two opinions? How long are you going to straddle the fence? And God knows in our culture, in our church culture, many of us are straddling the fence. Many are going in the world and doing what the world say. Amen. I bet you if I check all these cars in the parking lot of every church and those of you in your own home and get on your radio, I guarantee you, you got some secular music popping on there and ain't got no Christian stations. Y'all ain't liking me today. Because we halt between two opinions. Am I making sense today? Lord, I need your help today. What he was trying to tell them, listen here, you cannot, amen, he said halt. In other words, you guys are stuck between wanting God and wanting the world. You guys are stuck in understanding who God is and what God wants you to do and what the world wants you to do. Amen. But I want to encourage the saints of God. God always wanted commitment. Amen. And his creative order, God, always asks his people, commit to me. The other day we was talking about marriage and relationship. That's commitment. Nobody that's in a relationship and doesn't have commitment is not a happy camper. Do I have a witness? You got to be committed to the covenant. You got to be committed to the relationship. Committed makes it work. Do I have a witness here? God never tolerate, tolerated half-heartedness. He never did it. He never tolerated partial service. In the beginning, God. Somebody say, let's be true to God. In the beginning, God. We got to follow God's ways of honoring him. We got to follow God's system in dealing with our sins. We got to follow God's ways of how to live in this world. We got to follow God's way of being reverent. The house of God should be reverent. It was never designed to look like a club. It was never designed to satisfy the flesh. You mean to tell me that God is not awesome enough to create his own music, to create his own songs, to create his own glory, that he needs to use the devil's 
message to honor him. The devil is a liar. Our God is great. He created the heavens and the earth. The earth is his. Come on here. And we who dwell therein. I wish I had a believer here. God has said, listen here, if you don't praise me, I got so much power, I have a rock give me praise. Oh, come on here. So he don't need all these other entertainers to give him praise. God said, I'll give my praise myself. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody said, let's be true to God. He says, listen here in scripture. I am, uh, you don't believe it. I am the God of all flesh. But let's learn something today. Satan takes Jesus up in Matthew chapter 4, and one of the occasions of his temptation, he takes him up on a high mountain. He shows him all the kingdoms of the earth and the glory. Yes. Hey, glory to God. Yes, yes. And Satan says to Jesus, if you bow down to me and do what? Worship me. I give you all this. If you just give me the worship that you should give God, if you just give me the glory that God desires, I give you all this. We understand in some cultures, amen, we understand in, in the Illuminati that people are selling their soul to the enemy. That people, amen, are giving themselves totally over the enemy to be successful. And a lot of folks sit in the church just want so bad to be successful. But God tells us as his kingdom people to follow the pattern of Jesus Christ who gave him a rebuttal. And he said this. He says, Satan says this. He says to Satan, it is written that man shall live by the bread, by live, man shall worship the Lord thy God and only him shall he serve. Jesus says, listen here. And I got something that just struck me since I've been studying this in this service. Jesus says, listen, it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall I serve. Yes, yes. Somebody say, help us, God. help us, God. The problem today is the church wants God to serve us. We don't want to serve him. As your neighbor say, neighbor. What you want from God. All through scripture, I keep hearing the word serve. But in our culture, I want God to give me what I want. Am I right about it? I'm going to have you shout in a minute. But the Bible teaches me something in this text. That in that showdown between the gods of Baal and the true and living God, we find that they begin to go to him and they offer the sacrifice and they kept calling on Baal, but Baal never shows up. Baal never comes to consume the offering. I'm a living witness. No, when you go in this world to satisfy yourself where God wants you, you will never be satisfied. Do you hear what I'm saying here? You can have every man in the world, you will not be satisfied. Every woman in the world, you will not be satisfied. Your house can be so big, you can never have enough time to go to every room. It will never satisfy. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Baal did not show up. Baal was empty. The world system is empty. Do you hear what I'm saying? What the world offers you, saints of God, I know you're being pulled into the web, but the, what the world is offering you will not satisfy what God is trying to do in your life. It will never fill the void. What does Elijah do? Elijah says this. He says, listen here. Amen. He, he sat there and waited. You got 850 prophets just screaming and crying on their God. He's standing there by himself. Yeah, I'm going to be alone today to preach a word of God, to bring somebody closer to God's bosom, and I might be standing by myself. As I go in this world, I might not look like the world, might not like, act like the world, might not laugh at their jokes, might not go to their parties. My church will not look like theirs because I'm willing to stand alone for the God that I serve. Does God have anybody in here that say, that's right, I'm going to be true to God. Let's give God some praise in here. Hallelujah. I don't mind standing alone. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on, give him some praise like you mean it. 
Oh, glory to God. Elijah had instruction from God. Elijah obeyed God, waiting on them to do something. Nothing came through. And then Elijah said, cut up my sacrifice. Put that thing there on a, as a burnt offering, which is a representative of, of sin. Told him to pour water on it. Four, 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 twelve, amen, times representing Israel. Amen. God is trying to show them, Israel, that your God is a consuming fire. Amen. But before he did that, he did something that was very detrimental. Amen. To God's people at that time. And I say it is the same thing today. Amen. He, his scripture tells me, I think it's in verse 30, that he had to repair the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Elijah had to repair the altar of the Lord that was broken down before he can offer a sacrifice. How in God's word that the altar of the Lord was broken down when God had established the altar amen to be a place where God can meet his people. They have forsaken the altar of God. They have forsaken the ways of God, the principles of God and went on to have a religion without sacrifice. They went on to have church without Jesus Christ amen the altar was broken down but God was using Elijah saying here we got to bring these things back together for us to let God be God do I have a witness God is the one that started it God created an altar amen to show them this is it. this is the life of my people a life of sacrifice this is the Lord's table this is where we would meet this is where amen you would get your sins burnt this is where I will show up for you. Do I have a witness here? And the scripture teaches us that our God is a consuming fire. And God is letting me know that the altar, amen, is not just a place for religion, but the altar is a place of sacrifice. And God is saying that when we have an altar, God requires commitment. God is crying that this is the place where I can deal with the sin in your life, but it's going to take a sacrifice. Uh, we live in a time now uh, we want things from God but we're not willing uh, amen to make a sacrifice uh, we're in a time now uh, I want religion without the Christ uh, but I come to tell you uh, that your body uh, is the temple of the living God uh, I know that we ain't got amen uh, wood and stone altars uh, all around town uh, but Elijah was trying to show these people uh, amen that God was using him. Uh, he said, Lord, I need you to answer me uh, after he done cut up the altar, I mean uh, the sacrifice, uh, after he done put water on it uh, 12 times, uh, water on the app, on the, on the sacrifice, uh, water on the altar. Uh, the water was so much it pulled on the ground, poured on the ground. Uh, do I have a witness in here? Uh, Elijah was God, but using God was using Elijah uh, to show them the truth true power of the living God. Now, he tells amen and stands before the altar. Now, he says, oh God. Uh, he says, God show these people, uh, amen, that you are the Lord God uh, and that you can turn their hearts uh, back to you. Uh, that's my prayer today, uh, that God would get us into a place uh, that he'll turn our hearts uh, back to him. Uh, getting out of the comfort zone huh? getting out the proclivities huh? that God got to do in my way or go on the highway huh? but the Bible teaches me huh? to let God be true huh? and let every man be a liar huh? do I have a witness here huh? he says to them listen here huh? I want God huh? to show them huh? that he is God huh? and God listen here huh? will teach us a man huh? to turn our backs on our old life uh, be true to who God is uh, do I have a witness uh, God is saying here in the first Kings 18 uh, God was using another time in the season uh, where he was trying to bring uh, God's people back to himself uh, to reestablish the plan uh, that he has established uh, to be committed uh, to be devoted uh, to honor God uh, not our way uh, but his way. God wants to bring his people back. I come to tell y'all in this last hour you better wake 
up because I'm going to tell you today many of y'all going to be surprised because God don't change for us. He's still God. He's still mighty and he's still awesome. We got to remember that we got to honor God for who he is. God wants us to change our mind and think right. Live right. Pray right. Praise right. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And reverence the house of God. Find you one person. Don't be scared in the house of God. Look at that person with a little authority and say, well, Saint, Saint, be true to God. My God, my God. Somebody say, Yes, Lord. Somebody say yes, Lord. Somebody say yes, Lord. And in the story, we find that when Elijah made that prayer, God showed up. When you get in the vein of serving God and following what he says and doing what he requires, God will show up. Old saints would say he may not come when you want him, but he will come on time. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here. I thank God that I serve a God that will show up uh, in the Bible the class. Uh, at the end of that prayer, uh, the fire came down from heaven. Uh, didn't come up from un under the offer. Uh, if it came under the offering, uh, they would have said the fire was always there. Uh, Y'all ain't saying that here. Uh, if it came from another direction, uh, they wouldn't have believed in who God was. Uh, but it came from heaven because uh, God was proving himself. Uh, I'm a God God that answers by fire. Uh, do I have a witness? Uh, it had so much power. Uh, that fire got the wood. Uh, that fire took the offering. Uh, that fire also melted the stones. Uh, that fire ate up the dirt. Uh, my God is full of power. Uh, my father, my God is full of authority. Uh, do I have a witness here? Uh, he is a jealous God. Uh, he don't tolerate no second best. Because uh, he is the best. Uh, do I have a witness can you give him the best praise right now he's the best I said he's the best he gave me enough love to give me the level of choice uh, to do what I want to do in this world uh, I can go wherever I want to go uh, I can do whatever I want with the hours of my life uh, but I come to tell you the best life to live uh, is to let God be the best uh, when they begin to see how God uh, showed up in the situation uh, they didn't sit there uh, and look at their own way or go into bail another way uh, no they saw the light uh, they bowed down verse 39 uh, and everybody shouted uh, the Lord he is God uh, the Lord is God uh, y'all ain't saying nothing here uh, that is repentant uh, that's a change of mind uh, we living in a time now uh, where people see people healed and delivered uh, people amen feel the presence of God uh, but they refuse to acknowledge uh, that God is God uh, I come to tell y'all that they help me God uh, to know that God is God uh, acknowledge him for who he is uh, don't let the strategy of the enemy uh, trick you to get away from God uh, America is in trouble uh, we serve we got a devil uh, amen that has a strategy uh, a satanic strategy uh, that's pulling our nation uh, away from God uh, do I have a witness uh, he's taking God out of government uh, they're taking God out of the schools uh, they're taking God out of marriage. Uh, they're taking God out of our civics. Uh, they're taking God out of our public prayers. Uh, this world is in trouble because uh, the Bible declares uh, that a nation that determines they turn their back on God uh, shall be turned to hell. Uh, and so when I turn on the news, uh, all I see is hell. Uh, hell in the streets. Uh, hell in the houses. Uh, hell all over the countries. Uh, I see hell everywhere. Uh, people got attitudes for nothing. Uh, because the devil uh, is know that God said uh, that when we turn away from God uh, all hell breaks out uh, do I have a witness uh, one of the enemy's tools uh, that the devils use uh, and we see it in, uh, in, in 1 Kings 18 uh, that God hates idolatry uh, uh oh we in trouble uh, God hates idolatry uh, the Baal worshippers uh, and the worship of Ashrods uh, amen they were 
idols. They idolize false gods. They idolize so many gods. Egypt had over hundreds of gods. Gods of the sun. Gods of the moon. Gods of the plants. Gods of the water. Even Pharaoh called himself a god anyway. But I come to tell you, God says, oh, watch it now. I'm a jealous God. And besides me, there should be no other. So that's what the devil did. I'm going to pull God's people away from reverencing who he is. My God, my God. I'm going to pull God's people away from honoring God. And I'm going to have them being idlers. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. I feel like preaching now. What happened in Egypt? God was proving himself with all the gods of Egypt. God said, I'm going to prove to you that I am the true and living God. I'm going to send you a savior. His name is going to be Moses. And Moses is going to bring you out. And I'm going to bring you out with power and with a strong hand and with hundreds of God that got in the hearts of the people. God said the spike was in your heart. I'm going to show you my power. And if you can see me, you will get out of that idolatrous mindset. What did they do? They saw God's people at the power at the Red Sea. And what did they do? When they got over in the Canaan, a land of promise, a land of fruitfulness, a land of increase. What did they do? They forgot God and began to look at all the idols, the idols of Baal, the sun god, the idols of Astaroth. They saw the shrines, the high places that was built up. They saw that they didn't have a God that can be seen. They had to go by the spirit, but they didn't want that. They want what everybody else has. Where are we leaving, living now? The church don't want to walk in the spirit. They want what everybody else has. My God, my God. They begin to go into idolatry, offering their kids up the sacrifice, burning idols and incense under false gods. God's made by hands. God says, wait a minute. You're making me mad. So he judges Israel. He condemns their sin. But I thank God the more I read, his hand is stretched out still. I come to tell y'all, I don't care where you at. God never leave you or forsake you. His hand is stretching out still. He's telling us in his last hour, be true to God. That's what we're going to do. These churches going crazy. Saints going crazy. I don't care if everybody walk out the door. Our thing this year is be true to God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm going to get t-shirts. I'm going to get hoodies. I'm going to put it on the internet. We going to be true to God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The world going to party. The world going to backslide. But God got somebody that's going to be true to him. Do I have a witness? Oh, Lord. Somebody may say, listen here. I got the Friday night spirit. Don't talk about this in me. I want more from church. I want to smile, be happy. But I come to tell you, when God brings his people together, he says, listen here, that you got to instruct my people. My people got to walk in power. We're in the world, but not of the world. Do I have a witness here? And so you will say, because you know a little bit about the Bible, that that idolatrous idea, that's Old Testament. That's Old Testament. We ain't serving Baal now. We ain't serving Astaroth. But I got news for you. We have a modern golden calf. Oh, yes, we do. We have created our own gods in the 21st century. And I tell you now in the New Testament, God tells the church, flee from idolatry. God tells the church, don't walk in the self-satisfying. Don't you do it. Don't let the devil trick you. Don't do it. Don't look at any other gods beside me. Because when you look at an idol, you're going after something that makes you high, makes it higher than who I am. And I told the church in the New Testament, whatever you do, uh-oh. 
whatever. I'm going to have to slow down and stop because I don't know. Whatever you do, whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. New Testament. How many Christians? walk in their relationship and say, Lord, I'm doing this for your glory. Now, here's the key. We can say that if we don't understand what that means, that means he gets honored in what I do. I can golf. I can golf. You mean tell me golfing is giving God glory? No, if I'm out there not talking about him. Huh? I'm golfing, but I walk to the guy that's pulling the cart. He said, how you doing? God is good. I'm giving him glory. See what I'm saying? Huh? They put me on the team, four guys. I don't know them guys. What you do? I'm a doctor. What you do? I'm a banger. What you do? I'm a pastor. I save souls. I'm golfing, but I give God the glory. Huh? But if I get out there and start swinging that club and don't say nothing, come on the cloak of maliciousness, maliciousness and say, oh, I just help people. You know how we do. I'm not, I ain't going to mess with y'all. I'm doing real good. I'm almost finished. Whatever we do. In his image. I'm getting ahead of my meeting, but we're going to be true to God. And whatever we do, we're going to give him the glory. Yeah. 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 I've been asking myself, the Holy Spirit was telling me to ask you all this. I'm almost done. I'm getting older, so. I ain't hooping as much as I used to, but listen. What do you want from God? I need you to examine it. The Bible says, let every man examine himself, whether he be in the faith. What do you want from God? Think about it. What do you want from God? First thing that comes across your mind, I want to get out of debt. I want to be healed. <laughs> Huh? I want to be healed. I got a home problem. I want to get that. I need that promotion. That's what I want. What do you want from God? What do you want? Think about it. What do I, what do I want? I want to live long. What do you, pull out your list. What do you want from God? I want healings and miracles. But I want it without any commitment. I want things from God without reverencing him the way he says it. I'm going to do it to my comfort. I was sharing with the minister yesterday. The church now, and, and we're painting ourselves to this corner because of COVID, COVID we worship in comfort. If it takes me out of my comfort zone, I ain't doing it. That's why I'm having a meeting after service, only an hour after. Because if I have it on a Saturday night, half of y'all ain't coming. Because it's not in your comfort zone. But if I was giving away money, if I had Chef Ramsey coming in here to cook for dinner, everybody be online here, you'll be early. You hear me? We want to serve God in our comfort. We want to serve God in our own appeasing. I don't want God in his ways. I'm taking the chance that some of y'all ain't coming back next Sunday. 
I ain't, I ain't gonna take God based on His word, cause somebody ain't come to hear this. What did Elijah do? He repaired the altar. He made provision for God. He made provision for God to show up. God was using him to reestablish true worship. Because it says in scripture, so we ought to be true worshipers of God. If anybody worship him must be worship him in spirit and in truth. But they wanted religion without sacrifice. They kept the altar. They didn't have no altar. Get rid of the altar, but we still going to call on God and ask God to come. We want God, but we don't want none of his ways. We want God, but we don't want a relationship with him. But James says, hallelujah, and I'm done. Pure religion is undefiled before God. And we ought to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. And so the question was asked of God's people, choose ye today. Whom you going to do? Who you going to do what? Uh-oh. Do what? Sir. Do what? Sir. God want me to do what? Sir. Uh-oh. I'll serve God for my church and help build and help sponsor a concert and help, amen, do, a, do, a, do, a, do this and do that, but I'm not going to serve God, amen, to see him glorified. No. We have served God based on our own ideas. But God has shown me in his word, and I'm going to leave you all with this. Before Moses was sent to deliver the children of Israel, God's people were under oppression. God's people was under the tyranny of oppression so much it had increased to them. Like Paul said, I, I sold my soul, sold my soul unto death. The church is ignorant of the devil's devices. And we have allowed the media to draw us deep into idolatry. God doesn't like idolatry. Self-grandizement. I'm not going to throw off on y'all. I'm not throwing off. I'm trying to give you something you can relate with. Come on now. I'm not throwing off. I'm just trying to eat from, from my observation. Here's my page. You see my food, see my clothes, see my shoes, see this, you see all that. And I got one comment with God. God is good. Look all that I have put out in public about me versus the fact that I'm a child of God. I'm not saying do those things. I'm not saying that don't, 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 don't celebrate your successes. I'm not saying don't celebrate your, your, your promotions. I'm not saying that. God says use the world, but don't abuse it. Yes. But I got to be careful of idolatry. Yes, sir. If I'm focusing so much on myself more than God, I'm putting myself before God. Yes, and the scripture says, what agreement does the temple of God have to do with idols? I am a temple of God. I am the temple of the living God. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. When I got saved, he said, Paul said, listen, you turn from, to God from idols. You'd be surprised how much we idolize stuff in this world, but we don't associate it because we now have been taught right. And we wasn't taught right. I'm going to say this. I got five minutes. As a preacher... The pressure is, I'm, that's why I'm glad my course almost over. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I'm, 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 here I go again. I ain't said this in a long time. It was a time, every time I turn around, talking about dying. But I'm so glad. I'm hitting, I'm hitting down the downstroke. 
You want to preach, right? You don't want to preach in no empty chair. But if you give somebody what God said, that chair is going to be empty. But back in the day when they reverenced God, church was full because we came to hear God. And the pastor would preach Bible truths and history, right? The pastor would rebuke sin and heal the sick. And sinners would recover. Amen. Saints would be getting delivered and sanctified. Am I right? People marched in church. I remember Mother Smith. She would march down that aisle with her chest out. She would be the first one, boy. Everybody would. I was scared to marry Cheryl because she looked like a soldier. I said, I ain't marrying her. Because when you marry, when you marry the wife, you marry the family. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yeah, that's marriage part two right there. She was going on. I said, oh, she was mean. She looked mean. I said, uh-uh, no way in God's heaven. And I won't touch this woman with her mother looking like that. And Dean walking around like a bouncer. I said, oh, no. Forget that. That ain't God. I'm missing God. Amen. I told her, I told her part of the engagement. I said, no, nah, forget it. She had a fit. But I thank God that wasn't God's will for me. Amen. I cried more for Mother Smith than I did my own mother. Say amen. I can take care of Dean like she's my own sister. I was talking about the pastors, right? <laughs> you you want to you want to it's, it's, you have a mind you want to please the people. There you go. Yes, Are you going to please God? So you do things or have sermons to please people, right. and then you sit, and then God whips you behind. Because you disobeyed him. I serve a God that don't give me what I want. He gave me what I need. Amen. He said, I'll prepare a table before you. I didn't tell God I don't want, I don't want that. Like, I don't eat, I don't eat, I don't want those lima beans. I want string beans. I don't like lima beans. I don't like okra. Okra is slimy. I don't want it. Give me some broccoli. Come on. So God says, no, you need to hear what I'm saying to the church. And so pastors are under such pressure. I'm looking for counseling myself because God's dealing with me. I am. Because God is dealing with me to take a stand to be true to him. But but I understand a brother offended is harder to win. And I tend to be very passionate about what I do. And people can take it wrong because of my passion. I wouldn't get invited back to people's churches because I preach what God say. I'm very passionate. And they'd be like, Shh, strike him. Give us Barabbas. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I don't know. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a speak in code, but I want to say this. <laughs> There's a situation where I don't got on that pulpit, and I was talking about, I was trying to lift the pastor up, and I was talking about folks I ain't like, they ain't had me preach this since. <laughs> I said, what did I do? Then I hit me when I saw a fly. I said, oh, that's that person I was talking about, who I felt was not, was detriment. To them. Yeah. I ain't about me. See what I'm saying? I did what God said, but I paid the price for it. And the price is rejection. I'm, I'm going to go. Saints, we got to be true, true to God. All right? Let God be true. Be true to who he is. Is that right? You got to get in your prayer 
life. With his will or no, not my will. Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. I'm a realist. It's hard as Hades. I'm trying to diet. They say you, you're getting ready to have this happen, that happen. I'm trying to change how I eat. My wife made two pizzas last night. Carbs with cheese on it. I ate five slices. <laughs> It's hard, man. And I went to that bed. I said, oh, Jesus. It's hard. It's very hard. It's, right. it's hard. When God is saying, come now, but your flesh say, come on, just a, just a little bit. Y'all Paul, when he preached, he said, I have not shunned to show you the whole counsel of God. I have not shunned it. I did everything that God said. Amen. I said my testimony to let you know it's going to be hard. I said, I'm going to be true to God the best I can. God's going to say, well, do this, do that, do this, do that. Now, I'm not, not now listen, I don't, I don't try to offend nobody because I know what culture we're living in, right? But I'm trying to show you, be careful. Be careful in this last hour. When your, your, your derriere says, I don't feel like it, to worship God, be careful. Your church going into prayer, I don't feel like it, be careful. Right. I ain't getting on the prayer line. My show is on at the same time. Be careful. Eh? We having a prayer revival. I ain't got time. I was already there Sunday. I ain't going to go there. It's Friday, I gotta go Saturday, then I gotta go Sunday, and then she said there's a prayer. Come on now. I'm gonna read this and I'm done. Joshua 24, 32, 13. Somebody say I gotta be true to God. Verse 13, he said, I have given you the land from which you didn't labor, cities you didn't build, and you dwelt in them. Guess what God did to us when we got saved? Vineyards, olive gardens, which you, you, didn't, you didn't plant it, but you eat of it. God blessed us. Somebody say he's a good God. He's a good God. So Joshua says, now therefore fear the Lord. And I'm hoping I put a strike in everybody's spirit that every time you read scripture, you see that word serve. Serve him in sincerity and truth. And this is what, here's another account. Put away the gods of your father that you served on the other side of the flood. Ezekiel 38. Terry, you got Joshua 24? Get a mic. Get this mic. Because I got I to gotta find this scripture. Read 14 again. Praise him. Verse 14. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Fear God. Mm-hmm. Serve him in sincerity and in truth. And in truth, read. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood. What did I serve on the other side of my salvation? Come on, I Come served on. marijuana, hoochies, hotel, motel, and the Holiday Inn. Come on. <laughs> read. And but in if, Egypt. If that's what I served then, smoking and all that, how am I going to bring that in the church? Right. Come he on. says, forsake the God, that, that God. Right. Right. Good. 
Mm -hmm. And and serve and serve you the Lord. And it and if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Choice. Uh huh. You make the choice. If you got a problem with giving me all your life, you got a problem with presenting your body living sacrifice, you got a problem with holiness, you got a problem with righteousness. Well, get it. go on then. Come on now. Come on, you got sir. got an issue with me? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. But I love you so much, my hands stand out still. I got patience with you. That's why when you do something and you ask for forgiveness, I'm still there because I want to see you saved. I want to see you sanctified. I want to see you deliverance. My heart is broken. Half of y'all listening to me, watching me right now, need deliverance. You need deliverance from yourself. If I was you, I would clap my hands and say, Lord, save me from myself. Yes. Tell the truth. Next verse. Oh. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood. See that? I serve, I serve partying on the other side. Funkadelics, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Jane Brown. Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> I, I party on the other side. Smoke, mess with women, mess with men, stole stuff on the other side. People coming to church stealing. People come to church taking paper towel stuff that belong to them. Talk, y'all ain't saying nothing. Come on, sir. Party in the church, smoke cameras, action. I did that in the world. I'm gonna say this last thing. Since y'all y'all pulling out of me, cause y'all looking at me funny. Y'all looking at me like a man. So I said, let me go ahead. Come on, Bishop. Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter eight. Eight. I thought it was thirty-eight. Eight and seven. Read. And he brought me to the door of the court. He brought me to the door of the court. Who, when who I, he bring? He brought Ezekiel, another prophet, to the door of the court. Watch what God does. Mm -hmm. Y'all pull this out of me because God, God said, okay. Read. And when I looked, and when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. I saw a hole in the wall. And then he said unto me, and God said, son, of man, son of man, dig now in the hole. And when I had digged in the wall, and, behold, a door. And I dug in the hole in the wall, and then I saw a door. And he said unto me, yes. go in and behold the wicked abominations. When you open that door, see the wicked and the abominations of who? That they do there. That they do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you what they're doing. Read. So I went in and saw, and I saw it. Behold, every form of I creeping saw things. Them booty shaking on the altar. Mm -hmm. I saw a man humping on a woman on the pulpit. Mm -hmm. I saw lights, cameras, and actions and technicolor. Mm -hmm. I saw the girls dancing in hot pants and leather. The pastor preaching with light, leather pants. Come on here, y'all ain't saying nothing here. Yeah. Everybody looking cool and giving God no reverence. See me with my jersey on. I got mad as I don't know what. On Super Bowl Sunday, they was playing football on the pulpit. On Super Bowl Sunday, they was taking Bibles and using it as a football and kicking it to somebody to make a goal. That's how we lost reverence for God. Yeah. We trying to appease the people more than God. What in God's name are you going to come in God's house and play football on the altar and use the Bible as a football? And when the man was preaching, somebody threw a red flag out there like somebody made a foul. You right, foul! It's the Lord's house. Who went ungravitated to bring in the world into the church. I, I, I'll be nicer next, next time. This is in the church, man. I had to look at it three or four times. That can't be a Bible. It was a Bible reader. And he went boom and the Bible went and the guy caught it and everybody went, ah! Lord, help us. God's church. And they got five, six hundred thousand members. You know why? No commitment. No reverence. No accountability. 
Holy Ghost party came from hell. Yes, sir. Read a little bit more, but I'm Read. not. And so I went and behold, behold every creeping thing and abominable beast, every and, and, abominable beast. and the idols of the house of Israel idols. portrayed upon the wall round about. Yes, sir. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel, and in the midst of them stood Jehanazai, the son of Japhan, which every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. And he said unto me, Son of man, thou hast seen what the ancients of the house of Israel mm -hmm. do in the dark. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, mm -hmm. uh oh. I'm going to stop because I do want somebody to come back next week. Mm -mm -mm. Stop. What they do in the dark. What they do in the dark. God says, I am a God of light. And in me, there is no darkness. So what we're going to be in the world, I want people to fill this church up. We're going to put sunscreen on all the windows. We're taking away the slandaliers. And we're going to put spotlights on the stage. So when you come to worship, you're going to feel like you're in the club. You're going to feel like comfortable. See, they hide their deeds because... Now, I can go right now and take a drive, and that's why our church it is so dark, they got to use flashlights to come to the pulpit. Flashlights to read the Bible. God's house should be reverenced. Can you reverence him now? Do you have anything in you to say, God, I thank you? You got anything to say, oh, God, help us to be true to you. Come on now. Yes. Praise him like you love him. Yes. Praise him. Come on, praise him like you love him. Come on, praise him like you love him. I know he's all right. I know he's all right. Come on, saints. Come on, praise him like you love him. Come on, praise him like you love him. What's going to be next? What's going to be next? What's going to be next, Jewel? What's going to be next? You know what I did when I saw that? See, I'm going to show you who I am. When I saw that, I said, God, forgive me because I have sinned. Because on a Sunday morning, I had Jersey Sunday. I ain't kicked no football, but I didn't bring reverence to your pulpit on a Sunday morning. I said, forgive me. I will never do it again. That's how I live. When I find myself wrong, I go to the right road. Well, they may not. It's going to be, they, what they going to think? I don't care what they think. Go somewhere else. I ain't doing it. Guess Dennis. Be true to God. We getting ready to pray. Ishatabasiya. I ain't making no excuses. I'm not making no excuses. I'm making no excuses. I'm not making no excuses. You either love me or you don't. You're going to worship me or you don't. Can I tell you right now, if I was going backslide in this church, we'd be playing Funkadelics and James Brown every Sunday. And when I feel like having it easy, going to have some Marvin Gaye, some Barry White, and Teddy Pendergrass. Oh, we're going we gonna to be, be cool. We're going to be Beyonce, all these other hoes. I mean, women. I'm sorry. Let's pray. Stand in, stand in the sanctuary. If you're not holding, your body is fit. Every time I say stuff like that, I feel bad because I got Dean in front of me. I got Sister Anderson in front of me. They can't do that. Ernestine, they can't do it. 
You ought to be grateful that you can, Sister Glenn. Please. But if you can stand for a minute with me, I'm going to let you go. I said, Lord, when I was seeking this, I said, Lord, how am I going to make an altar call? Your altar call is a place of sacrifice, commitment, self-denial, a place where we can get our sins fixed. I want you to be your own altar this morning. Hey, God. I just want you to think about some of the things that I said. God just saying, I've called you. Could you plead? Could you reverence me? Could you love me as I have loved you? I love you. I love you. Could you please come to me? Come without money, come without price. Whosoever will, let him come. If you're not saved today and you don't want to be saved, I understand. But I won't accept it. Because God has more for you than for yourself. God's got more for you. But Satan has bound us with so many demons and obstacles. That's why we prayed for our minds the other week. That we can be free. The Lord is instructing me to ask you, could you for a few minutes just worship him, be honest with him, seek his help in his hand to help you be true to God? Come on, everybody, just go to God. You the altar, you the altar. You the, you're the altar. Your heart is the altar. Hey, hey, hey. Your heart is the altar. Your heart's the altar. Lord, I don't know where in my life I have my idols. It might be my car. It might be of my whatever. But, oh, God, if I'm putting it before you in the wrong way, show me. Help me to give you more prominence in my life. Help me to stay close to you. Help me to stop making excuses. I want to be saved. Save me from myself. Come on, all over, all over, all over. Save me from myself, God. Don't let me walk in pride. Don't let me walk in pride, God. I'm not what I think I am. If any man think yourself more highly, don't, don't think more, yourself more highly than you ought to think. But help me to stay humble. Humble myself under the mighty hand of God. He said, if I do that, you'll exalt me in due time, God. Touch my heart. Touch my heart with the meditation of my mind. Oh, God, come on, Lord. Come on, Jesus. Take out this dirty heart. Give me a clean heart, Lord. Oh, God, forgive me for any sins that I've made, made, made excuses for. Forgive me any sins I may have committed this week, God, without even being reverence to you, God. Forgive me. Oh, God, I'm asking today, God, sanctify me. Sanctify me holy. Sanctify me holy. Sanctify me holy. Come on, pray to him. Don't pray to him. Pray to him. Come on, pray to him. Don't wait for the prayer revival. Don't wait for the prayer call. Pray to him now. I should hear prayers all over this place. We should ask God to help us, God. Save the unsaved. Heal this body, God. I want to serve you in this body. I've been asking you to, to heal me, but I didn't want to do it with service in my mind. But now, God, I, I want you to heal this body. And I want service in my mind. I want service. I want service in my mind. Help me to serve you. Serve you, God. Serve you in spirit and in truth, God. Help me to put my, my hands to your plow, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want to serve you, God, and don't look back. Come on, saints. You're not praying. You're not praying. You're not praying. If you're not saved, if you're not saved, say, Lord, save me. Help me. Help me, God. I'm broken. I'm broken. I need to be membered mended i'm broken i'm broken lord i'm buried in my problems i need a resurrection today my heart is broken i needed to fix it god oh god so i can serve you so i can serve you 
so I can serve you. So I can serve you, Lord. Take my fallacies and my inadequacies and use it for your glory. In the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, the prayer, supplication. So let's give him some thanksgiving for victory. Yes, come on, let's praise him. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, lift him. Just a moment, give him glory and lift him. We thank you. We heard your word. We thank you. Come on, thank him because we're blessed to hear his word. Come on, somebody bless him. We're blessed to hear his true word. Come on, somebody give him praise and glory. Yes, yes, yes. He that have an ear, let him hear. Oh, what the Spirit said to the churches. We are blessed today. We're the church of the living God. Come on, somebody. He sent his message through his messenger. Come on, somebody bless him. God, we hear you. And we're looking to do all you have asked us to do. Come on, bless them one good time. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Hallelujah. You can be seated momentarily. Amen. We know we have a meeting. Just a moment. Amen. We're, come on, let's thank God for our great bishop. Amen. Letting the Lord use him to talk to us. Give us the bread of life. I don't know if you realize it or not, but you are so blessed today to hear the word of truth come on somebody how many love god for that come on somebody you can do better than that anytime you know why you know why the lord talked to us like that today because he love us come on somebody come on be that is a blessing because he love us amen he's not willing that any should perish but all come to repent. God loves you today. I wouldn't want any father or mother who just give me everything I want in the world and never tell me the truth. Is that right? You are blessed because God loves you enough to tell you the truth. Come on, somebody, one more time. Give the Lord a hand of praise. We are not bastard children, but we have a father that loves us. Amen. And I praise God. Amen. And he certainly sent leaders after his own heart. So we praise God for our bishop. Let's let him know. Be encouraged today. We hear you. Amen. We hear you. And we're coming back to service. We're coming back to hear more. Come on, somebody. How many coming back to hear more truth? We're not going to be mad and stay home and all that. Come on, somebody. Is that good? Amen. Amen. And so we're praising God today. I'm so blessed. I know you're blessed. We have a meeting today. But we want you to give today as the Lord has prospered you, so let him give. Our brother Jewel is getting an offering together. Amen. I consider myself so truly blessed. Amen. To hear the word of truth. Amen. We could have, he could have wore a bozo the clown suit with a red nose and got up here today, but he didn't come like that. Amen. God sent his word from a true man to his true people. Amen. I'm grateful today. So if you're grateful today and one of the things that we learned throughout the years of doing ministry that people put their money towards, you could just play softly, people put their money towards the things that they love. Is that right? Amen. A lot of things that you love to do, you put your money towards it. And so if you love God and you love his people, why don't you share of what God has blessed you today from your financial blessings? And the Lord will certainly bless you real good. And our sister Karen is there, our usher is there to give you an envelope. Amen. To uh, write your designation there on how much you would like to give with your tithe, your offering, and and uh, we'll greatly appreciate every gift. Our, I believe our one of our sisters is in the back. Amen. To help you swipe your card, and so we thank God for that. A lot of means to be able to give, uh, Givelify and Cash App and different things. So we just appreciate every love gift. If you every week we actually we tell you if you haven't found a church home in his image, what we always tell them you just found one. Amen. 
If you're looking for a church home, let us know. Come on up here and uh, stand with us. Say, hey, look, be my, I need a church home somewhere I can hear the truth. Amen. And we'll love on you and praise God for you. Amen. We're, oh, you're always welcome here in his image. Amen. So everybody's getting ready to give some 30, some 60, some 100 fold in good measure. Press down the Lord will give to you. All right. If you're ready and you're ready to give, writing your checks to in his image, why don't you stand to your feet? It makes it easier for your neighbor to get out of the row. Amen. And we're thanking you so much for your liberal giving. All right. So when we're ready, why don't we just stand all together and be accounted for, all right? Let's do this, amen, before we give our seed today. Let's hold our seed, whether you have your card or whatever you're giving. Because, Lord, you know, with saints, in this hour, he said, buy the truth and sell it not. And we want to keep hearing the truth. We got to sow into the truth. Is that right? Father, we praise you for all of your people, all of your saints that are sowing into this ground of truth today. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, give back to your people as only you can. We thank you for the elevation and the increase that shall come because we're supporting the gospel of Jesus Christ. We give you glory and the praise that is look for blessings, Father, that we were not expecting. Bless your people as only you can in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come from the center aisle right on through. God bless you. Thank you so much for giving. 